Hi, I'm Leslie Page from Leslie Page, and you're watching the Disney Channel. Hello, all you beautiful humans and monsters. My name is Leslie Page, and this is my channel, Leslie Page. Yes, I named it after myself, because if I didn't, a one-fanged, long-nailed vampire was going to attack me. That is a reference to later in the video. It is potentially a long video, so please keep up. Decoms, I love them, you love them. They can be problematic, but most old Disney things are. Today I decided to give some commentary on one of my favorite ooky spooky kooky scooey dooby doo <laughs> decom films, Halloween Town. Do you remember the series? Cause I do, and it has permanent resonance in my brain now. But before I start, Haha, <laughs> I'm a witch now. So the film begins with Marnie who claims to be practically grown up even though she's only 13 years old and her mother Gwen fighting over why her and her siblings Dylan and Sophie can't enjoy Halloween. Marnie wants to go to a party with her friends and Gwen says no. I have my reasons and I will explain them to you when you're taller. And I really struggle with Gwen's decision to not let them go out. I guess she's keeping a secret but at least like Come up with a reason, Gwen, you know? <laughs> then Marnie gets really sassy about the whole situation. Maybe I'll put down some roots in the carpet. Oh no, Marnie, it's too dangerous. There are things about vegetables that you don't understand. Damn, Marnie. Which sparks a conversation between Marnie and Dylan. Halloween is cool. Agreed. Also in this scene, Marnie mentions that Gwen and her husband met on Halloween to Dylan, which is like weird. Like why would you tell your kids that you and your partner met on Halloween? Because if you're trying to keep them from want to being involved with this holiday, wouldn't you do everything not to romanticize it? And meeting your spouse on Halloween would romanticize it. I don't know, maybe they told the kids before the husband died, but it's still kind of weird. Like, why even mention it? Anyway, Gwen is just not having it and finally puts her foot down with Marnie. Well, I think it's obvious why Halloween is bad. I mean, that whole razor blade and the apple thing was an urban myth, of course. And Dylan, boy, why do you know so much about Halloween? Like, the dangers that come from Halloween? Did you seek out this information just to validate your mom without a reason because that's just blindly following your mom and that's not good. Gwen is a good character but it's still like Dylan no. Anyway, Gwen's mother Agatha that goes by Aggie aka Debbie Reynolds being Debbie Reynolds shows up. Grandma! Here. She shows up after not coming over for Halloween for years and can only show up on Halloween night. And Gwen's surprised by this which makes no sense to me because even though she hasn't been there in a couple years she can only come on Halloween. Like you would just kind of expect it every year, but I, I, I don't know. They don't have a good relationship, so who knows. And Aggie's interest brings up some questions to me. She floats down with an umbrella and she has a bag of endless supply, which reminds me a lot of Mary Poppins. And Mary Poppins just kind of floats off at the end, so I wonder, is Mary Poppins a witch? Because she's also Disney proper, so does Mary Poppins live in Halloween Town? I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised. So Aggie is here. Gwen is not happy, but the children are thrilled. Especially Marnie, who asked her mother to not have a fight with her grandmother. Grandma Aggie's the one who always starts it. Damn, Dylan. You know, these kids got an attitude. I mean, they kind of have a broken family, and like, their dad died, and the grandmother and mom don't get along really well, and... You know, they feel really isolated on Halloween, even though they feel like this want and desire to be involved with Halloween. I... I don't know. Disney, why do you make me think about these things? In the next scene, Aggie is showing some magic. Dylan is being a savage. And Mom is getting upset because of hieroglyphics. Mother. Hydroglyphs would still be in our world, right? Apparently not. But what stood out to me most in this scene is that Aggie brought costumes that weren't witch costumes for the kids. Let me explain. I'm ahead of the class and I've watched all of the Halloween Town movies now. I know kind of what's going down and I know for a fact that the inhabitants of Halloween Town are offended when we as humans dress as them. That includes other monsters dressing as other monsters. And later on in the movie, Sophie even moans like a ghost in front of a ghost and he's offended. <laughs> Hey kid, I don't appreciate stereotypes like that, all right? So why would you bring other costumes than witch costumes? Because it's not going to affect them because it's part of their culture, but I... Am I thinking about this too much? Yes. 
Gwen and Aggie then have a conversation where Aggie says, Being normal is vastly overrated. Agreed. And honestly, this scene, along with a couple other scenes, is super relatable and sweet. Although I question Gwen's secrecy, I don't necessarily blame her as a mother because I think she's a good mom. And I see why Aggie wants the kids to know about this other identity that is being a witch because she's so proud of being a witch. And that's great. Love that for her. She's just a little sneaky about it sometimes. Aggie then tells a story about Halloween Town and throws in some witchy hints here and there. Some of the slimiest, squashiest, ugliest little monsters turned out to be the nicest. And this is actually a very cute and poignant message about how it's what's on the inside that matters. Good job on that one, Disney, but we get questionable from here on out. We have another scene where grandma and mom talk about their differences and about being witches, and this time, Marnie overhears it. Aggie then also tells Gwen about the impending doom coming on to Halloween Town, and Gwen just kind of says, no, I'm not gonna help. But I can't just leave my kids to go fight some nameless force in another world that I have nothing to do with. Which I don't blame Gwen because Aggie definitely feels like someone who would just say anything to get what they want. Marnie then goes and tells Dylan what she just found out and like a teenager would believes that she can handle it all on herself and decides to follow her grandmother. It must be um, one of those radio controlled models. And Dylan, your sister just told you about witches and Halloween Town. Your grandmother just pulled random stuff that came out of nowhere from her bag. Dylan. We got my guy. And then in the bus scene, Dylan just continues to not believe anything that's going on, even though he's seeing literal monsters and witches on a flying bus in a dimension hellscape. Wake up! Or maybe we fell asleep on the bus. Yeah, that's it. It's all a dream. Dylan, again, like, you're awake in this moment. I know you think you're dreaming, but wake up! So they're in H-Town now, and who else is there? Sophie! Sophie! How did you miss Sophie? Enter Calabar, who can't remember Sophie. What? But Marnie, easy, got it. And he immediately wants to talk to their mother, Gwen. This concerns me. Calabar then gets the kids into a taxi with the Illuminati symbol, so we know that that's real in this universe. And the driver, Benny, has no eyes, which Dylan has a comment about that I agree with. Let's talk about how legal it is to drive with no eyeballs. We then find Aggie making instant witch's brew in a machine set to bubble bubble Toil and trouble. Those are the only buttons. Hi, this is editor Leslie. You can tell because I have glasses on. And I just made a big old goof here. There are obviously more than three buttons on this machine. I'm just still confused about what exactly this product is for. Is it a microwave? I don't know. So I'm gonna continue with my line of questioning because this product still baffles me. But no, I made a mistake and that's okay. I don't understand this product or its complimentary product. Is this the only way you can use this product? How expensive is this? Why do you need this? Can you use it for anything else? Is this the only setting you have? I just, and later on we find out Witch's Brew doesn't even seem that hard to make, like very few ingredients, there's no measurements, you don't even need like a full moon or something. This isn't polyjuice potion. And then they make a Disneyland reference. Try animatronic. Disneyland's full of stuff like that. Here, when Mr. Lincoln drives me to the store, we'll talk. Ha. Then we see the creepy scarecrow, who still to this day makes me uncomfy as an adult. It honestly makes me feel better to think of him as a Slipknot wannabe, so um, he's gonna be known as Slipknot now. So Slipknot is in this looking cauldron glass thingy, and now we know why Aggie is making Witch's Brew. She's trying to put it into a talisman. This is honestly the part of the movie where I had the biggest disbelief. Magic, fine with. There, there's literal magic in this movie, doesn't bother me. But getting a ladle full of liquid into a thin tube talisman without spilling, no funnel, no issue there, just goes whoop, right in. Nope. Doesn't make sense to me. That That's magic. That's magic right there. That's not how spoons work. So the talisman doesn't work with the instant witch's brew. Yeah, for trying to use instant. So they decide to go into town to get all the ingredients. Is there gonna be a Halloween party today, Grandma? Sophie, I get you're a child, but you're in a place called Halloween Town. Why would they dress up differently throughout the year? There was a time when humans and monsters could be together. Humans feared us and tried to destroy us, so we did our best to make them miserable in return. So, we decided to create our own world. Wait, okay. Okay. Our world was once full of monsters and humans. Okay? So then, the monsters and the humans could not communicate with each other, so the monsters decided to go to another world, another planet, parallel universe, whatever. Did they actually create a world? Or did they eradicate 
another group and just take over the planet. Did they... Mm, did... Did they colonize Halloween Town? I'm probably reading into this too much, but did they? They see Calabar in town, and Calabar tells Aggie to step off the bad thing. Pretty sus, if you ask me. Fine brooms. Brooms! These brooms look sick. Why would you ever get an Imbus 2000 when you can get a Windsweeper 5000 from a zombie Elvis? Like, that's my ideal broom buying experience. Then we meet Luke, and Luke is just so toxic at the beginning of this movie. Like, he thinks he can just objectify Marnie and she'll be okay with it, and uh, we'll touch on that in a second. I'm something of a big cheese around here. I was kind of hungry, but then I smelled something stink. It must have been the big cheese. Ha! <laughs> Good one, Disney. Then Aggie explains magic. All you have to do is want something and then let yourself have it. So magic is just wishful thinking, like I can manifest that sh Dope, I'm a witch now and I'm manifesting my own magic. It doesn't, I already did the joke, okay. Then Big Mama Gwen arrives and she is not happy. And this scene just made me really love Dylan because he's trying so hard to just be a mama's boy and it's precious. He's probably my favorite character because he's a mama's boy. We love a mama's boy. And then Gwen puts her foot down and is like, no, you're all grounded. The fate of Halloween Town rests on your family's shoulders, but you ground your kids and they're immediately like, okay, that's power. Gwen, you are so powerful. So they try to leave and they meet this two-headed monster, monsters, and I hate this character. Terrible customer service, zero stars. And Dylan mentions that they should go see Calabar. Also, Calabar has a crow, so obviously he's a bad guy. And here is where we are going to talk about objectification. His little bat thing cat calls Gwen. Luke objectifies Marnie the second he talks to her. Spoiler alert, Calabar is the bad guy. And he will only help Gwen if she agrees to go on a date with him. This says a lot about him as a leader. Like he obviously acts and allows his subordinates just to think that they can obtain women whenever they want and that's just not the move. I know I'm reaching, this is a kids movie, but this makes me think that he's more scummy and makes me want to hate him more which I do. Aggie is extremely upset with the kids leaving because she just loves them so much and wants them to be with her and she wants to save her town. She wants to save the world around her from this bad thing that's happening. And that's when Luke finds her. Or is the big powerful Cromwell witch afraid? I don't fear him or any creature. Take me to him. Aggie, you're smarter than this grandma. It's a trap. In the next scene, Gwen is trying to have a private conversation with Marnie in front of Sophie. Like, Gwen, why are you trying to be quiet? Sophie can hear you. She's got spidey senses or something. If you want to give up your roots, that's fine. But I don't. And I agree with Marnie here. Like, I think it's important that Marnie learn about part of her identity, which is, I think, the whole crux of this movie, but Gwen just doesn't want to have it because she's scared. I don't know why still. Yeah, I get there's a bad thing going on in Halloween Town, but this seems like an anomaly. Like, this isn't common. It is, though, in the rest of the movies, but that's neither here nor there. Overall, it's important that she knows who she is. Even though I'm now concerned about how this entire world was created, Marnie should know what it's like to be a witch. So now we actually meet Slipknot, and he's still creepy. Welcome to my museum. <laughs> Evil villains, stop monologuing. It, um, makes me uncomfortable and it just gives your entire plan away. Also, Luke, you're annoying in this scene. Will you shut up? Thank you, Slipknot. Well, Luke is annoying until he decides to be a good guy and stop being a jerk. Development. Slipknot then freezes Gwen and Aggie, which this whole thing confuses me because Gwen immediately goes down and out, but then Aggie has like a solid minute where she can still talk and move a little bit, which is just helpful for the exposition that happens. And this is actually kind of nice. Although this is repetitive to us, Marnie doesn't know the information about freezing, and I think it's important that Aggie actually told her what's going on or else Marnie might have thought that they died, which could have made her extremely hopeless, but she's not in the next scene. Your big sister is gonna get mommy and grandma back. I know, I'm long-winded, we're almost done here. Earlier, Aggie said that they could go into town and get everything they needed for the witch's brew, which I assumed meant they were going to shop for them. Well, apparently, no. And so the deception begins. 
the children get werewolf hair by assaulting a werewolf. And how did he know that they were humans because they look like witches? Yeah, baby! Then they offend a ghost by feeding into a stereotype just to get his sweat. Also, this class looks really fun. I really want to join it. And then they just straight up impersonate a dental assistant to the tooth fairy to get a fang. And this vampire has great nails. I told you I would reference it. It's here now. You're welcome. Thank you for watching this long. Also, sweating that much to where you look like a different ghost is very unrealistic. But ghosts totally are. So they now have all of the ingredients. And good old Betty Boy shows up. What is it, Sophie? Bad thing is in there. Sophie must have great stranger danger senses because she just is calling all that bad thing shit. Like, I get she's a witch, but she's good. This recipe has no measurements, just random items. That's not how m m anything works. Recipes don't work like that. And the spoon thing still baffles me. So now they have the witch's brew made. It's in the talisman, but uh-oh, Marty can't remember the spell. Luckily, your girl Sophie is on the case. She comes to the rescue again. Now listen. I get this is supposed to be Marnie's coming of age story, but Sophie's just a good little witch. She's super powerful. And I know Marnie's supposed to become the next leader of the Cromwell line, but honestly, Sophie could take that place so fast. With the talisman in hand, ready to take it all the way to the big jack-o'-lantern in the middle of town square, Marnie takes along with her a robe, which is a good idea. Slipknot is now monologuing to the entire inhabitants of H-Town. And this exile from the mortal world which the humans have stolen from us! Okay, I'm more confused. Did the humans kick the monsters out or did the monsters leave and just take over their own world? Both are bad and I don't know which one's worse. Appropriating a culture at Halloween is terrible. It's very, very bad. But just straight up creating a holiday based off of a culture, making fun of it, celebrating kicking out those you appropriate seems way worse. Wait, humans do that. I'm gonna move on now, but are those colonial soldiers? Surprise! Slipknot's Calabar. Okay, I know I didn't like Luke in the beginning because he was objectifying, but as soon as he turns good, I'm kind of on the Marnie and Luke train. Like, ooh, ooh, I'm ready for them to be together. And see, it was a good thing she had the robe or else this entire scene wouldn't have worked. Oh dear. Okay, so Marnie's just about to get the talisman in and boom, she's frozen by Calabar. Oh no. But wait. There's more. It's the freezing thing again. I don't I don't understand it. So Gwen is done immediately. Aggie got a full minute and Marnie can just move. Is it a power thing? But Marnie hasn't known about her powers for a long time. Is it an age thing? Because Aggie's like a hundred. And during it, the scene quotes Aggie talking about like manifesting it or whatever. But it's just kind of like... You have to be unfrozen still, right? Right? I don't know. So Marnie lights the Jacko pumpkin, Calabar is not happy, Aggie and Gwen are awake, and it's time to boogie. Calabar starts talking about how he and Gwen could have ruled the entire town, planet of Halloween Town. I don't know which one it is. And it just makes it seem like he did all this just because she married a human and he wanted her. Like, Calabar, there's other witches out there. You're not a bad looking guy. You're pretty sexist, but no, that's... No. Surprise! Dylan's got powers. We've got a warlock on our hands, kiddos. And now we're gonna hum our way out of this. <laughs> and Calabar is gone. Yay! I kind of love how the entire town is just watching. Because you would. Or at least I would. I would totally watch. Marnie then finds Luke in his true goblin form. He's a goblin, by the way. Luke just becomes even more precious to me. And in the scene, it kind of feels like Marnie's digging him, which I, I think is great. Luke says something kind of manipulative. Especially since even when I was good looking, I didn't have a chance to get in a date with you. But I really think Luke truly feels that way. And apparently he's right because in later movies, Marnie is digging on other guys. Like in the next movie, she likes Cal, who, spoiler alert, is Calabar's son, while Luke is still trying to flirt with her. And then he's not even in the next two movies, which really upset me. But I mean, Cody was cute. But Lucas Grable, get out of here. You don't deserve her, even if it's imposter Marnie. So everyone's happy in the end. It's exciting, great, wonderful. Aggie goes and lives with them for two years. Luke is now apparently the bus driver. And the entire town or world waves goodbye. Again, is the world Halloween town or the town is 
part of a bigger monster world. Whatever it is, I'm stressed now that it was due to colonization. So that was fun. This entire thing was fun to research. I got to watch all the Halloween towns early this year. Do I think that this headcanon that I've created for Halloween Town is due to colonization is gonna ruin the movie for me forever? Yes! But I'm still gonna watch it next year because I'm reaching anyway. And I'm gonna do my outro because uh, I just look way too smug in this. Like, I know I look cute, but like, Leslie, what are, what are you doing with your face there? Thank you for watching my video and joining me on this long-witted journey into ruining Halloween Town. Please like and subscribe and comment to me if there are any of the movies you would like me to ruin because I love ruining movies for people. Especially if it's nostalgic to me because it hurts my feelings too, and I'm here for that. If you want to, please follow me on Instagram and Twitter and TikTok. I spend a bunch of time on there, so I would enjoy more friends. I genuinely hope you have a wonderful day and I hope to see you soon. Bye.